Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation. We have the square root of x plus a where a is a given number, a parameter, equals e to the power x and we're not going to solve for x values. Even though we could solve for x values, we're going to look at the given condition that this equation has only one solution or I could phrase it a little differently and say these two graphs are tangent Obviously, there's a difference between them, but, you know, I'm going to focus more on the tangent. You'll see in a little bit. And we would like to find the A value that satisfies this. How many A values are there? Is there an A value? Is that like infinitely many or a single one? What do you think? Make a guess and we're going to get started. So we have this interesting equation, which is pretty non-standard. And to make matters worse, there is a given number, a parameter in the equation. Equations with parameters or parametric equations are very, very difficult. It's probably one of the things I'm guessing, that's a guess by the way, I could be wrong, but that's one of the things that AI almost would never be able to solve, okay? And there, another type of question is probably functional equations. I don't know, I could be wrong again on that one. But uh, with the equations with parameters, I don't think AI can figure it out because there's a lot of interesting points to it. So anyways, let's see how we can handle a problem like this. These are one of the hardest problems, especially if you need to take an, you know, college entrance exam in Russia or in a nearby re region, Romania, then you have to deal with these kinds of problems. I haven't seen many of these in the United States. Sometimes they show up in math competitions. And we've done quite a few before. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, this equation is non-standard, or I guess you can call it transcendental, because we have a radical on the left-hand side, and we have the exponential on the right-hand side. So you can't really solve this by normal means. What does that mean? It means, you know, how we solve trigonometric equations like sine, cosine, tangent, or how do we solve, in general, basic exponential equations like a to the power x equals a to the power y, or any type of polynomial where the degree is less than or equal to five, right? Well, with the quintic, we can't really solve it in general sense, but you know, some equations are factorable or there are some uh, neat tricks. So that's what, it, what I mean by that. We have different kinds of functions on either side. So to be able to understand what is going on, we kind of need to look at it graphically. And what does that mean? Well, it just means that uh, we're gonna be considering two functions here. One of them is f of x, equals the square root of x plus a. Of course, like I said, a is a real number or a is a given number, but it has to be real, of course. And g of x is gonna be given as e to the power x, which is something we know, it's an exponential. So if you consider those two graphs together on the same coordinate plane, which I'm gonna show you, a neater graph, but let's go ahead and take a look at a rough sketch right now. So for example, y equals e to the x is gonna uh, approach zero as x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches infinity, it's going to approach infinity. So that, that's the end behavior. So it's going to look something like this. And of course, you're going to have an x-intercept at 0, 1, so on and so forth. And there's no, I mean, did I say x-intercept? I meant y-intercept, of course. And there's no x-intercept because y can never be 0. So a, e to the x cannot be 0. Obviously, e to the x can never be negative either, right? It's going to stay above the x-axis. That's an important point because when you look at the graph of two different things, like intersecting, having a single solution, more than one solution or no solution, you kind of need to pay attention to that as well. But with Desmos, this can actually be an animated. So you can kind of, um, what you can do is, which I'll show you a screenshot of, but um, you can just uh, plug in y equals square root of x plus a, and immediately a ruler is gonna come up with a. So you can kind of determine what a is gonna be on, like zero to 10, whatever and you can kind of play it as well. The other function you're gonna graph is e to the x, and then by, by changing the a values, you're gonna see different behaviors. One thing that is constant, that's not gonna change, is y equals e to the x because that's fixed. But this one is kind of like a function, a graph that moves with different values of a. That's what I mean by a parameter. It's actually a family of functions. For each value of a, you get a different function, right? So all in one. Great, so let's see how we can graph y equals square root of x plus a. Now think about y equals square root of x first. How do you graph it? It looks like this, right? 
It's kind of like a parabola, but it's kind of the opposite or the inverse of a parabola. If you think about y equals x squared, it's gonna look like this, and y equals square root of x is gonna look like that. So they're symmetrical, so on and so forth, right? What about square root of x minus one? Okay, this is a transformation. When you change the x value from x to x minus one, it just means a move to the right. So your graph is now gonna be, it's gonna start here, because if you think about the domain uh, where it's zero, so on and so forth, you can realize this is one. So adding a will move it in the negative a direction. Of course, that means it can be positive or negative, right? Let's go back here. So to understand better how this works, we can kind of think about it. For example, if my function started here, oops, that's by the way, I wanted, meant to change colors. So suppose we started here and graphed our function like this. Do you think they would intersect? No, they wouldn't. Because uh, the, the way the graph kind of is concave down and the other one is concave up, this is going to be like probably the closest distance, somewhere in between, but then they'll get away from each other. So they won't intersect. If they did, they would intersect right away. Uh, okay, uh, what about we move this point to the right? It's going to get worse. But if you move it to the left, obviously at some point like this, uh-oh, oops, that's not I didn't want a straight line. So something like this, you'll have two intersection points. But you don't want that. You want a single solution. What if we move it even more? Here's the thing. Your, your graph, the square root of x plus a, is going to start on the x-axis, for obvious reasons, right? Because y has to be greater than or equal to 0. And it has to intersect twice. Because one, one is concave up, one is concave down. You get the idea? So... You don't want two solutions. You want one solution. So you have to be in between. At zero, here, or here. That's the question we're going to explore. So let's go ahead and do this uh, a little differently. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Maybe uh, maybe try to erase this as much as I can. Oops. Probably need a, hmm. Probably need a smaller eraser. And then let's give it a try, OK? Oops. The eraser keeps changing, so it's kind of like crazy. All right. Cool, I was able to erase that. Let's try to erase this one. Cool, cool. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I want to go ahead and I probably want to delete the dots too, but I'm not sure if I can do that cleanly. Oops, yay, I was able to do it. And I can do it in magnify like this and oops, that's not an eraser. Okay, here we go. Cool, cool. Now, uh, what else do I need? Okay, I think this is good enough. So let's go ahead and take a look at it now. So if I start somewhere here, it's probably going to work. So I'm not exactly sure. It could be a negative or it could be a positive value. It doesn't matter. You just make up something. It's probably negative. I'm just thinking, okay? And uh, depending on the concavity, of course, and my graph is going to go like this. So let's just assume my x value here is negative. So I'm going to call that x sub 0, okay? That's basically, actually, I don't want that to be x sub 0. Never mind. Uh, I want this to be x sub 0. I want the intersection point to be x sub 0. So let's go ahead and erase this as well. Oops. Cool, cool. Now, oops. I'm going to call this point x sub 0. And then this is going to be y sub 0. And I want to erase this as well. I don't need a 1 there. y sub 0. So what is x sub 0 comma y sub 0? It's the intersection point of 2 graphs. And what do we know about those graphs? Well, they need to be tangent to each other, right? So what does that mean? It means that two things. First, when we look at f of x0, that needs to be the same as g of x0. By the way, to remind you what those are, f of x is equal to square root of x plus a, and g of x is e to the power x. So we want, first of all, we want them to intersect. So they have to have the same y value at the same x value. Make sense? So this has to be true, but that's not good enough because we also want a common tangent. Why? Because they're tangent to each other, which means they have a common tangent like this, which means the slope of the tangent to each of these graphs is the same, which means it has the same slope, right? So in other words, f prime at x sub zero is the same as g prime at x sub zero. F prime at something gives you the slope of the tangent line. Remember? Okay, the first derivative. 
So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to go ahead and plug in f uh, x sub zero here in both of these functions. That's going to give me square root of x zero plus a equals e to the power x zero. And I'm going to differentiate these functions. If you differentiate square root of x plus a, you get one over two times the square root of x plus a because x plus a is just like a, x, uh, x plus a is just like x. And g prime is just going to be e to the x because its derivative is itself. And then if you plug in x sub 0, first one is going to give you 1 over 2 times the square root of x sub 0 plus a. And the second one is just going to give you e to the power x sub 0. Again, uh-oh, these two things are equal, which means these two things are equal, which means the square root of x 0 plus a is the 1 over 2 times square root of x 0 plus a. If you cross multiply, 2 times x sub 0 plus a is equal to 1. x sub 0 plus a is equal to 1 half. Nice. And from here, x sub 0 becomes 1 half minus a. Okay, but that doesn't give us the value of x sub 0 yet. It does actually if you plug it in. Look at this. We could use this and replace x sub 0. So we have the following, remember? And now we're going to replace this with 1 half. Square root of 1 half, which is root 2 over 2, is e to the x0. And then go ahead and ln both sides. That's going to give you the answer. ln, ln. And then from here, you're going to get x sub 0 equals ln root 2 over 2. And if you plug it in here, you get a. Well, actually, a is 1 half minus x0. So a is just going to be 1 half minus ln root two over two. So that's the answer for these two graphs to be tangent and also one solution because there's no other way that they can have a single solution, right? Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but this brings us to the end of this video. As you can see, the graphs, yes, it's a negative value as you can see here. And these are, actually, this is the A value, which is positive, by the way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.